Dr. Noreen, your resident foot and ankle specialist, and welcome back to my channel. So guys, today's video is about something we're all going through together, which is this pandemic caused by the coronavirus. You all know what the coronavirus is and the most common symptoms associated with it, which are respiratory in nature. So that could be anything from shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, also coughing and fever. However, what you may not have known is that COVID-19 can also affect your feet. So there's two things I wanna talk about in terms of the virus today and how it could potentially affect your foot and ankle health. First way is something called COVID toes. And I'm gonna go into that in a moment here. But the other way is if you're just being forced to be at home more often and how having to stay home more often could affect your foot and ankle health. So dermatologists and podiatrists around the world have reported some cases of an unusual rash that could be related to COVID-19. And what they're seeing in some of their patients are purpley blue reddish rashes on their toes that can also be sometimes bumpy, tender, and itchy. Those same lesions are sometimes also found on their heel and their fingertips. And you guys, these cases are being reported around the world, but there aren't that many people presenting with this symptom. It's just an observation that some people in the medical community are noticing. And the reason that it's a little bit noticeable is because those types of lesions can be seen in something called chill blains. But chill blains usually happens in the colder months. And obviously, Corona started earlier in the year and throughout the summer months where it was kind of still warm outside where you wouldn't really anticipate seeing those types of lesions. Right now, you guys, COVID toes is just an observation. It isn't something that has a lot of data on it. It's just an observation within the medical community. So I just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention since this channel is about foot and ankle health and COVID-19 is something super relevant right now. So I just wanted to just talk about it, but it's definitely nothing to be super concerned about because it is very, very low on the list of symptoms that you could have if you did have coronavirus. Obviously, if you do suspect you might have COVID-19, go see your local healthcare provider. Because of HIPAA and copyright reasons, I can't include pictures of what COVID toe looks like, but what I will do is I will include links to articles in the description box down below. If you click on the link, it'll take you to the article and within the article, they have pictures of what some of these patients presented with. You could also just Google COVID toes and, and or chill blains and that'll show you some of those results. So COVID toes in and of itself isn't likely to affect many people. But the second thing that I wanna talk about definitely is more likely to affect more people. And that's what I want to talk about next. Because of this pandemic, a lot of people are just at home more often than they have ever been before. And this can also affect your foot and ankle health. So if you are someone that's at home more often than you have been in the past, you could have developed foot pain and in particular heel pain. And that's what I want to address in this part of the video. Why the heck are you having heel pain all of a sudden? Well, it could be a combination of three things. One, you're home more often. You're doing less activity than you're probably used to doing and you're probably walking barefoot. The combination of these three things can lead to excess strain on your plantar fascia. Not doing the activities that you're normally used to or being less active than you have been in the past, you're probably using your leg muscles less. And sometimes what that could lead to is your calf muscles and your posterior leg muscles becoming tight. And walking barefoot on a hardwood floor can put a lot of strain on your plantar fascia. So the combination of a tight or a short muscle belly in your calf, as well as putting that direct strain on your plantar fascia can lead to heel pain, specifically something called plantar fasciitis. So you guys, what can cause plantar fasciitis? I'm gonna kind of explain it to you on this foot model. Gastric soleus muscle belly here, which is also known as your calf muscle. Those two muscle bellies will come together to form your Achilles tendon, and your Achilles tendon will insert on your calcaneus or your heel bone. And then your plantar fascia is a ligament that starts in the bottom of your heel bone and it goes across your foot, kind of lays across your foot like this. And when you have your Achilles tendon put tension on this heel bone, it also then puts tension on this plantar fascia. And you guys, side note, I have to digress for a second. This foot is so floppy because they made us buy 
tied this foot in med school to study for anatomy class and I remember sitting with this thing for hours because we had to literally memorize every nook, nook and cranny of every single bone that's why this is loose because you can literally pull it apart and look at all the joint surfaces and we would have to memorize or learn really you know what every jo joint surface looks like and anyway brings back a lot of memories but sorry this is why my foot model is so floppy right now but I digress what was I saying? So your Achilles tendon will come down and sit on your calcaneus. Because you aren't doing as much activity as you're normally used to, you aren't activating your foot and ankle as much as you're normally used to, that can cause your muscle belly, your calf muscles, or your gastroc soleus muscles to become short, which will then put tension on your Achilles tendon, which then puts tension on your calcaneus or your heel bone. And that in turn put tension on your plantar fascia, which is which starts right here on the other end of your heel bone, and that can cause heel pain when you're walking. The other thing that contributes to that heel pain is if you're walking on a hardwood floor and if you're walking barefoot, you're now putting this kind of irritated inflamed ligament directly on this hard surface continuously, right? So now you're probably home more often, you're walking barefoot, and you're walking on a hardwood floor. So the combination of those three things is what can cause heel pain to start. All right, so if you are at home and you are starting to have foot pain, or if you are at home and you wanna prevent potential future foot pain, what can you do to help yourself? There's two things I want you guys to do at home, and you should do this regardless all the time. It's so good for your foot and ankle health. Those two things are stretch and don't walk barefoot. You guys, so much of foot and ankle pathology stems from having a tight calf muscle. So stretching out that calf muscle as much as you can is super important. So do as many calf stretches as you can at home. The one thing that I really like to personally do is if I'm just laying around or if I'm watching TV, I'll just kick my leg straight out so that my knee is no longer bent, my knee is straight, and then I will point my toes towards my nose as far as I can possibly take it until I feel a stretch in my calf muscles. And then you guys wanna hold that for at least 60 seconds because that's how long it takes your brain to register, hey, that something's happening, something's changing. And you wanna try to do that as often as you can throughout the day. And even if you're just sitting at your desk, just straighten your leg out and just start pointing those toes towards your nose. That's something I do quite often actually. The other thing I want you guys to do is don't walk barefoot. I always tell my patients, always wear some sort of supportive shoe gear in the house. So there are some companies that make super cute slippers or sandals that you can just designate to be your house shoes. So you come home, take off your outside shoes, you put on these house slippers. What I would recommend is buying a pair of slippers or sandals that are your designated house shoe or slipper sandal and that is just what you wear at home all the time don't walk barefoot in your house some companies that i really like are birkenstocks clark's vionic and there's a whole bunch of other companies out there as well that make really good shoes in general but also really good house sandals and house slippers i personally wear birkenstocks in the house and i literally just have a pair designated to be inside that i wear all the time they're on my feet right now kind of don't judge me. They're worn out. I need a new pair, <laughs> but I wear them all the time. So you guys, that's my advice for this video. One, just wanted to make you aware of COVID toes, but do not panic. It is not something that happens very often. If you think you have coronavirus or any symptoms like that, go see your local healthcare provider. And you guys, now if you're home more often now because of the times that we live in, or just in general for your foot and ankle health, I want you guys to stretch and don't go barefoot. If you want me to make a video about shoes that I like, shoes that I recommend, I'd be more than happy to do that. Let me know if you guys want me to do that in the comment section down below. I'll also link those articles that I was talking about in the description box down below. So you guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it, and I'll see you guys again next week.